calcific tendinitis of the shoulder. It is calcium deposits in the supraspinatus tendon. It is a condition that usually occurs in adults around the fourth decade of life, and there is a higher incidence in diabetic patients. Calcific deposits cause severe pain in the shoulder, and that pain is increased by elevation of the arm above the shoulder, and it also leads to decreased range of motion of the shoulder. It's actually deposits of calcium carbonate appetite crystals into the rotator cuff tendon. It's more common in females, and the clinical symptoms and presentation is similar to impingement syndrome of the shoulder. Some of the patient may have diabetes or hypothyroidism. There's no history of trauma. The etiology is clearly not known. The calcific tendonitis has many phases, and the most painful time is during the resorptive phase. These deposits affect the function of the rotator cuff, causing chemical irritation and shoulder impingement. It reduces the space between the rotator cuff and the acromion, and that will lead to shoulder impingement. X-rays is the gold standard for the diagnosis. The X-ray would show calcium deposits about 1 to 2 cm from the supraspinatus insertion. The supraspinatus tendon is the one that's most commonly affected. The appearance of the lesion on X-ray it varies from a fluffy, cloudy appearance with poorly defined periphery, and the patient will have more pain in this type than the other type, which is will circumscribe dense calcification. The MRI may be difficult to interpret. However, we can see a small black signal in the supraspinatus in the MRI. There will be low signal intensity in all sequences. The MRI is not necessary for the diagnosis. The X-ray is more helpful. However, we get the MRI to see any associated pathology, like if the patient has rotator cuff tear. How about the treatment? Conservative treatment. Physiotherapy for stretching and strengthening the cuff anti-inflammatory medication, subacromial injection. Conservative treatment results in improving the symptoms in about 60 to 70 percent of patients after six months. Surgery. Surgery involves removal of the lesion and possible repair of the rotator cuff tendon. Surgery is done in larger lesions or when conservative treatment fails. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.